Oj, 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 vad gott. Nu känner man sig redo. Okej. Okay. As you can see, I have a couple of lenses and um... You know, when I started this YouTube channel way back, like four years ago, I had absolutely no idea what lenses to buy for filmmaking and why I should have that lens in my kit. I made a couple of videos back then that was titled like the best lenses for Sony full frame cameras when it comes to filmmaking, but I thought, why not keep this trend going and show you the lenses that I got in my kit every year that I think are still some of the best lenses that I use on a daily basis and in my content creation. So if you're looking to buy a new lens for filmmaking, then maybe what I got here can help you decide whether you need the lens or not. Let's do like this one and start out with the Prime, the 24, the legendary 1.4. GM lens. This lens has been one of my absolute favorite lenses for a very long time. It's actually one of those lenses that when I tried it out, I think this was back in summer 2019, I instantly felt like I need this lens. It has been such a workhorse when it comes to the things that I've been able to create with this, not only because you have the really bright aperture at 1.4, but also because of the sharpness and the overall lens size. It fits in your bag and you can bring it wherever you want. It doesn't take up that much space considering the quality that you actually get from the lens. The reason I like this so much is not because of all the B-rolls that I shot with it, but it's because that 24 millimeter provides you with a very natural look in your image so that it doesn't feel distorted because it's not too wide, it's not too tight. You still get a lot of stuff into the frame. And when you're able to shoot at f1.4, it really open, it opens up a new form of storytelling when you're using this lens. And when it comes to the short films that I made throughout the years, this was actually one of the lenses that I used for 90% of all the shots that we made. When you want to get a full body shot, this lens when you get an environmental shot, location shot, this lens when you want to move in close, get a little bit of detail stuff, this lens, it covers such a huge ground when you are doing filmmaking and that's why I love the 24 millimeter focal length, still do, I'm not using this lens too much right now but I would say that that's because my content has strived away from being short films to more tech reviews, tutorials and uh, vlogs basically. But after having this lens now for over three years I still think it's one of the best lenses that I got in my kit and I cannot sell this because I know that I will use it whenever I make some sort of short film in the future as well. Still comes highly recommended. Next lens, the Tamron 2875 Gen 2. I don't know where to start with this lens, but one of the first lenses that I bought for my Sony full frame systems was the Tamron 2875. It was such a good lens for what I did. I remember when I was shooting events and um, I was like, I need to have a lens that I can afford, that's gonna be able to use and just throw around in my bag, like running on shooting wherever I go. And Tamron just dropped this. I also think that that was like 2019. I picked the first generation up and abused that lens. It was so good. And to this day, I think that for the value that you pay, there's probably nothing that's gonna beat this lens when it comes to image quality, sharpness, and overall usability. I mean, like so many videos that I've used this lens to shoot my B-roll when it comes to YouTube. And since it has kind of like macro capabilities, it's very close focusing. You can get those really tight shots whenever you're doing a product B-roll. And that is where I think that this lens is great. However, though, when you're shooting at 28 millimeters, I do think that that is a little bit too tight. I've always had that feeling. It's kind of a weird thing. A lot of people are not experiencing that, but when you have gotten used to other lenses that covers the 24 millimeter full frame focal length, then in my opinion, I think that you can definitely feel that 28 is too tight. But for the price that you pay, I'm doubting that you're gonna be able to find something that is better than this. Okay, next up, the size baddest 85 millimeter f1.8. When it comes to filmmaking, 85 millimeters is, in my opinion, a must-have focal length. I love this. The image quality that it produces is just so good. And being able to switch between 85 to 24 definitely brings you into that territory where it starts to feel like real filmmaking because you have two very good angles. I've never really felt that 1.4 is a must to have when I'm shooting with the 85 millimeter, but it's something that would be cool to have. However, though, 
This lens has OSS. That is something that a lot of other 85 millimeter lenses does not have. And it's also one of the reasons why I love this so much. Because when you're shooting a lot of stuff handheld with this, it does not look shaky. It looks smooth. And when you're shooting slow-mo stuff with this, it really separates the background, gives you this like nice, I don't know how you call it, like uh, wobbly jiggly yellow motion some people don't like it some people do i think it looks great and sometimes it can be a little bit weird but most of the time it actually does a really good job of stabilizing the footage and if i remember correctly this is also a lens that i bought way back in 2019. next up 1635 gm lens wow i love this lens for the fact that it has fantastic image quality it is perfect when it comes to the focal length i mean like 1635 focal length is one of the best when it comes to making youtube videos and vlogs when it comes to size and weight it's a beast it is one of those lenses that should have had an upgrade a long time ago but haven't really gotten to that point yet when that upgrade comes i really hope that sony is gonna not only make it a little bit smaller i know that it's gonna be hard but i know they can do it but also a little bit lighter and a faster focusing motor because i think that all of those things combined would make one of the most perfect ultra wide angle zoom lenses there is but so far I've been trying out this lens, I've been trying out the 1635 f4 size, I've been trying out the 17 to 28, all good lenses. But when it comes to usability and reliability, this lens feels like the overall winner between the three. The amount of things that I've been shooting with this lens is just wild. Sometimes I'm too lazy to even switch up to the 85 millimeter and then just go for 35, move in a little bit closer, get the b-rolls that I want. When it comes to the price point though, that is also one of the downsides with this lens. I do think you get a lot of value for what you pay because if you want to have the best image quality possible, it's going to cost you. Is it worth it for what you are creating? I mean, like if you're making YouTube videos for fun and you're not having this as your profession, I would not actually say that this might be worth the money. I would probably go with something that is a little bit cheaper. But if you want to make sure that the image that you're getting from your camera is the absolute best that you can get, this lens is one of those lenses that you should honestly get because there's there's no rivalry when it comes to this one yet. All right, last one. The 50 millimeter F 1.2 GM lens. I did not think I was gonna enjoy the 50 millimeter focal length as much as I have. The main reason that I got this lens was because when I was down in Italy together with Peter, he was like, can you take some photos of me? And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna use my 85. And he's like, no, 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 take my camera. And he had the Canon version of this lens and I was blown away of how good it looked. I think that that same night I just went up, I ordered this lens and then here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. Image quality wise, fantastic. I brought this to Iceland. I would say that this is one of my favorite focal lengths to have when it comes to landscape photography and the way that you can capture everything around you without it feeling too tight or too wide. It's kind of a kind of a nice mid-ground. What sold me is the fact that you can go down to f1.2 and really have the separation between the background and the subject that you're taking even though both are pretty far away from the camera. The downside of this lens though is definitely the weight. It is one heavy piece of gear. When it comes to to my daily driver. I'm not actually having this in my kit every single day because it definitely takes a toll on my back, but I try to have it with me as much as possible. But if I can't bring this lens, I'm bringing the 85. And if I can't bring the 85, I'm bringing this lens. If I can't bring any of those, I'm bringing the 2875. If I can't bring the 2875, I'm gonna bring the 24 millimeter with me. And if I can't bring any of those lenses, well, that's where I go to the 1635. 2.8 because this lens is probably the only lens that I can do everything that I do on a daily basis. There you go. This is the kit that I enjoy the most when it comes to making movies with my Sony cameras in 2022. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up and um, don't forget to subscribe as well. That'd be highly appreciated. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Peter Franz Goodbye.